Nobody needs to struggle with substance abuse or mental health issues on their own. Milwaukee County Behavioral Health Services offers free resources to anybody needing support. Today's Mental Health Minute, we're joined by Tahira Malik, the founder of Samad's House. Now, Tahira, somebody's listening, struggling with uh, addiction. They feel like maybe they want to take that first step, but they're not sure how to do that. That's where you come in, right? Tell us a little bit about uh, Samad's House and how we can take those first those first steps. Samad's House is a sober living home for women. And what happens is that sober living is the last step, if you will, for before self-sufficiency. When someone's ready to take that first step, they'll go into detox, whether it's First Step, Dewey, or Rogers. Once they're at finished detox, after five to seven days, they'll go into residential living. And they go into residential living from 30 to 90 days. And that gives them a little bit more vested time in their recovery. When they come out, you know, they've had all of this time to start rebuilding their life. They come into sober living. And that's when Samad's house steps in. And what Samad's house do is we rebuild the mind after addiction. If you've ever lived in addiction, you lose all sense of self. So you have to really work on the three components of mind, body, and spirit because you lose all three components. So at Samad's house, our programming is geared to rebuild the mind, the body, and the spirit through programming, through programming with financial education, nutrition, and wellness. If you've lived in addiction and you've lost your children, we work with Child Protective Services to regain those custodial rights. We teach women how to learn to work again by building healthy habits and making better choices. We are we are partnered with employment agencies so that after they receive the interviewing and the job readiness training, they can go out into that field and they know how to save money and relive life and regain. The whole mission of Samad's House is to be able to train people and retrain people after addiction so that they can regain custody of their children and build a stronger community by restoring those rights. So we're looking at this thing in a more holistic way. We're not looking at this thing as the, because obviously with addiction, there are, you know, the, the initial physical things, the physical elements of addiction, but then what's the next step after what's the next step after you've been sober for a few days or whatever it takes to, you know, move that, the, the, through that system physically, then we're talking about how to refocus our life essentially. Right. In, in where, in, and that's kind of where you come in. Absolutely, Brad. But when you're the first step, when you're detoxing, yes, you're going through different physical elements, but at the same time, you have to also rebuild your mind Mm -hmm. because you don't want your mind going back to that place of addiction. You don't want your mind to go into the craving of missing that drug. So you have to do things that are retraining that mind, whether that's reading, whether that's exercising, whether that's yoga, you have to do something. You have to consistently stay busy so that your mind does not go back to that dark place. The idle hand, the whole the idle hands kind of just a devil's cliche. workshop. Right, right. Yes, so yes. what would be some things that people would struggle with during this period, during the, um, the, the recovery stage? Some of the things that you deal with when you're dealing with recovery is because if you've been in addiction for a number of years, you may want to go back into that environment. So being in a place that you're kind of, I don't want to say locked in, but it's more contained. So that it's more structured so that you don't go back into that environment and not just being in that place, but being active in that place so that your mind is not going back. We, When we talk about living a holistic life, it's talking about rebuilding, not just your mind. It's talking about keeping your body. You lose all of that in addiction. You lose all of that. Because it becomes the singular focus, right? The only, absolutely. And if we're going to talk about addiction, and we can't be remiss in talking about the opioid crisis that mm-hmm. we're currently dealing with. Mm-hmm. And having been, having lived that crisis... When you are addicted to opioids, that's the only thing your mind is going to focus Mm -hmm. on. Right. So when you go into recovery, you have to be able to have your mind focused on something different 
consistently. And that's where the restructuring of that mind, the yeah. restructuring of that body sure. and your spirit. You have to have, you can't do anything without something being higher than yourself to cling to, to say, I know that I'm able to get through this. So I've always been like a list guy. I like making lists and checking them off. So are there milestones that you guys set throughout the course of whether it's 60, 90, whatever amount of days, are there kind of milestones that you allow people to kind of check the boxes off as they go? Talk about some of the milestones that, that people go through. Absolutely, Brad. So for the, the first 30 days, when you enter Samad's house, the first 30 days, we don't allow our women to go into the community alone mm -hmm. just because of the temptations sure. of the different environmental changes and things they may see. So we take them, we'll assist them to their doctor's office, to grocery shopping. So one of the milestones, one of the 30-day milestones for Samad's house is number one, being able to gain two passes a week mm -hmm. to go into the community to visit mm -hmm. your family or to even go shopping alone. That's the first 30 days. The first 45 days, we work with Educators Credit Union, and they do financial education classes. Okay. And they open up a bank account, a savings account, or a checking account so that whatever monies they do have, it goes into that account. Mm -hmm. That's important because when you live in addiction, and you receive money or gain money, the first thing you do is go out into the community and spend that money on that drug. Mm -hmm. So it's huge to be able to open up yeah. a savings or a checking account. You know, that's that's great. That's a great feeling. After 60 days, they're able to have three passes a week. And also we work with them if they've had driver's license to get their driver's mm -hmm. license or identification because mm -hmm. when you're living in addiction... You care nothing about your license, identification. Right. Sometimes you don't even want to be found. Right. So right. to be able to say, hey, I'm a person. I'm reliving my life. I'm attaining goals. We also take them after 90 days. We'll take them to the shopping mall, if you will. And mm -hmm. they're able to spend the monies yeah. that they've earned through employment. Yeah. Just that feeling of being and in the world, being independent, making decisions for yourself. Making That's decisions, good decisions for, for yourself. For yourself. Yeah. Great decisions for yourself. Yeah. And now to have that money and to purchase something, let's just say a shirt, that's a huge accomplishment Absolutely, for someone yeah. who's lived in addiction for they a number of all, years. Because they may not have purchased things like that because all of their resources went towards the addiction, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And the one thing that as women, when we've let our parents go, to be able to get your nails done or your eyebrows arched, that's mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. That is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you mentioned it before in, in previous mental health minutes, we've talked about it. The the biggest the biggest hurdle oftentimes is finding the courage to start. But once you've found that courage, it's important to know where to go. Once you've decided for yourself, I'm making this change, it's gonna happen. What do once if somebody's listening right now that's made that decision, where do they go? What do they do? Well, if you've made that decision that you're ready for that help, you can call Samad's house. You can call 211. Although we're a sober living home, we also assist with those calls that come in for help. Mm -hmm. And I've taken people to Rogers and Dewey and followed them through the whole process yeah. so that they can come to Samad's house. There's a whole community. They can call Milwaukee County Behavioral Health System and will help on the 24 crisis hotline. They'll direct them mm -hmm. to the right organization to hold them through that. Amazing, amazing. And that's, you know, and that's the biggest key to, you know, to somebody who has made that decision. You don't want to have too much time to change that decision. We want to act and get and get the the process started right brett if someone's made that decision if they said at the first step i'm ready mm -hmm. i've literally taken someone to first step first step detox and sat there while they admitted themselves in there mm -hmm. and then they'll call back and say i'm still here i'm doing this what should i do next and so it's very important to get someone if someone says they're ready it's very important to take them to mm -hmm. get the help that's needed because you don't want them to go back into yes. the streets. Yeah. Because if they're ready, 
you have to take them right then, right there. It's immediate. It's an immediate need. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, Tahira Malik, the founder of Samad's House, joining us today. The uh, Milwaukee County Behavioral Health Minute and resources, all the info at betterwaystocope.com. That's betterwaystocope.com or the 24-hour crisis line that you mentioned, 414-257-7222. Once more, 414-257-7222. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Mental Health Minute. Thank you, Brett, for having me.